shop. As you know, if you've been following along with me, and if you haven't, you need to subscribe to this channel. A little block looks like this word subscribe. Click it, and then a few minutes later, a little bell will come up next to it. Click on that, and you get notified when we get new videos out. All right, now, business out the way. Let's talk serious. I'm cleaning up. What did I find? And you know, it's been five years since I had my stroke, so I'm having a little problem remembering stuff. I found a whole box of threading and detail tools for doing hand-driven threads. Hand-driven threads. Well, I went looking for this because I found the rig I built a couple of years ago that using a cutter that I got from Bonnie Klein years ago. And a jig I built in this shop to fit on a lathe I used to have. I was doing threads on the lathe. Powered. And sound effects. And really nice fine threads. And I think it did it to a three-quarter sixteen rod, which means I had sixteen threads per inch. That's pretty fine. But it still came out really nice. But I want to do I want to get this ready and show you a little something about threading. And hopefully we can do it. All you gotta do, and you know the deal, you gotta watch. You gotta pardon me a little bit if I feel distressed today, and, and it comes off. I, I'm real very. I'm, I'm upset. I'm verklempt. Verklempt. Yes, my wife says I'm verklempt. A little hand screwdriver I had from Black and Decker, called the Smart Driver, little four volt thing, didn't run fast. It was good for putting together small things, putting cavities back on tools and drill in a little bitty, 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 bitty hole in the tops of ink pens and stuff like that, it quit. It's young. It's, it's only 17 years old. And it just quit. But I got five other replacements in here someplace. I found three with the chargers. So we're looking at charging them back up again. I had to have it. I bought tools. All right. I'm trying to get over that. Well, management's getting me over it. Let's talk about this. I first saw a guy doing hand threading at a SWAT meeting. SWAT is the Southwest Association Turners, SWAT. It's got nothing to do with all the guys on TV with the guns and all. This is about a bunch of Texans. Oh, well, that's something else, huh? All right, and they all get together and talk about wood turning for three or four days. It's, it's Friday, Saturday, and a Sunday, and it's in Waco, Texas at the Waco Convention Center. It's August 22, 3, 4, 5, or something like that. Um, it's the last weekend of August each year. It's a fantastic event. It's the event that I live and die by because I really want to go. So uh, if you haven't looked at it, look at their website, SWAT Turners. SWAT Earners. That's the VAT, your N-E-R-S dot org. And you'll find all the details. The dates are advertised. The hotel plans there. Oh, shoot. I gotta go make my hotel reservation. I'm sleeping in a truck. We're making a hotel reservation. All right. I found this piece of boxwood. I like boxwood. It's good for this. I don't get any American-made boxwood because it's not the same. I gotta find a, somebody's bringing it in from England. I can see you get better uh, boxwood. Okay, we got better winters. You get better boxwood. Okay. Brought this piece in. And a long time ago, I chucked it up to do something with. Now, the key's in the chuck. All right? It's a habit to leave it in there. It's a bad habit. You see I had put this receiver on one end of it? Right there. See the little dado? Well, I put that on one end of it, and then I chucked it back up, and it was fairly true. Now I want to put the same kind of detail on this end. And I stopped to show it to you, because it's a trick or a hint that you can get around you should have in your shop. We're going to put it back in the chuck. Right? It's a strong way, a one-way strong hole chuck with profile jaws, and I'm at the right size. The right size is what? 
right size is right here. Go into it. You can't see that, can you? You need to move again. Come on. You're in a better, you're in a better spot now. I think you can handle this. All right. I want to put the recess on this end of this piece. Now I'm going to zoom in and show you. You see that? Now, if it was true and round, because I jumped the gun. I always do that. Okay, if it was true and round, I put it in and I spun it. Very true. All right? If it wasn't very true, I'd true it up. Right. Then I need to cut a tendon on this to fit in that chuck right there. What size? Well, with the chuck sitting just like it is, with about a 1 8 inch gap in it, the thickness of a stick rule, y'all know what that is, right? Okay. Then I made me a jig to match that. My jig is right here. Oop, there it is. Now, I've shown this before. Now, you see the detent? The detent is the size of the perfect tenon I need on there. Let me get this out the way. You see, I'm about a quarter inch too big right now. And guess what? If I take an eighth off this side, it's going to come off that side too. So, I'm going to get this down to that size. And then it'll fit in that chuck a whole lot better. Well, it'll fit in that chuck perfectly. So, I'm going to bring up my gauge a little bit. Then I'm going to bring in this. This is my skew. My regular skew. Now, notice it's ground on a little bit of angle going back. That angle is about the same angle as that jaw back there on the inside. Which means when this goes in, and you can't see from where you're at, it's slightly in. Now that's not an easy thing to do, to cut. Oh yeah it is. We're going to scrape it, shield up. Why don't we just swing it? So I'm too small, it'll suck. So I'm going to go back and check it again. I'm still a little bit large. And I'm taking a little bit off at a time. That's what we're supposed to do. You can tell by those shavings that I'm scraping it out. It's on edge grain. So that's what I'm going to go back in with now. There I am. I am at the right size. I am just about perfect with it. Using this gauge, I'll know that when I flip this around, that jaw will hold it and hold it good and tight. And I don't have the serrations on that jaw. It's smooth faced, which means I get a lot of binding, a lot of holding if I'm at the right size. So before you say, I got to have a chuck. You have to have a chuck you can understand. This is my gauge. This has got a little magnet on it. Doesn't stay there. It sleeps over here. And it keeps it out of the way, but handy. Out of the shavings on the floor. And now I'm ready. Let's do something with this. We're starting this project, and if I started this project correctly, I would draw it out on a piece of graph paper, in full size, on the graph paper. And I've got quarter by quarter squares, and I'll be able to look at it and determine where I want this break to give me a good even thing, where I'm going to round this, square this bottom off. I'm probably not going to be any deeper than here. Pencil, pencil, pencil. We used to have a pencil. Huh. All right. Not going to be any deeper than right here. But, so I'm going to take that into my front, my calculator. My calculator is real simple. Let me move and get to it. This is my calculator. This will give me the proportions for phi. Not pi, phi. And if you'd like to get those proportions and all this, you can build this yourself. It's real simple. When this is together, zero, zero, it's okay. When this is one inch apart, this is 3.18699 inches apart. It's, it's a simple math. Here, here's the formula. All right. Now, I'm going to lay it on the furthest I can get for the top, and the furthest I can get from the bottom, and I'm going to say that's going to be it. Now, that gives me is, that dimension left right there is my bottom. 
So I'm going to wait it out and then I can piece this off. But I have to figure out what I'm going to lose for the cover. So I'm going to lose about a quarter inch for the cover. Right, let's lay it out. Okay, you got nothing on me. My hardest thing in my shop is keep track of a pencil. Alright, that's the number. This will be my bottom. And I just let it, put it up here and I put a little eye side on it. Why? Because the mine likes this ratio to this ratio. It's like a 3 by 5 card or a business card. This ratio to this ratio makes them pleasant to look at. That's why I'm using this. Now, you can do it by math. That's real simple to do. But they always have a calculator that can get thrown on the floor and peed on. Oh, I didn't pee on it. Uh, but like that, all right, that's that's it. Now, this is going to be my break. Now, I am going to figure that that bringing a break, I'm going to lose about, oh, quarter, three-eighths of an inch out of the overall height of the piece when I do the coupling. So I'm going to figure that in. So this will be the lid. This is gone. This will be the base. Those are hard to read when it's spinning fast. But I'm going to part this off. And then I'm going to do... Come back and do the lid first. Gotcha? Gotcha. All right, now, I, I know what you're going to ask me. I know what you're going to ask me. Why am I doing it that way? Why? Because I'm a brain dead. I'm brain dead in some areas. I did it exactly backwards. Where were you at? You weren't catching me. All right, and I want to lay it out again. I'm going to tell you that. That's my brake line. Move the brake line here. And I'm going to go above it and below it. You see, so this one doesn't count anymore. Why? I'm saving chuck moves. What difference does it make? Well, right now I'm going to park this off, clean up the top, put threads on it, and then when I put this in, I want to make the bottom fit the top because the top's the inside thread's a little bit harder to do than the outside threads, and then do it. And while I have a turn around locked up, I'll remove this one, then I'll come back and remove this. Lathe moves, chuck moves, it all matters. Let's talk about the layout and what we're doing here because I didn't draw it on a quarter inch graph paper. I don't have any out here in the shop. I gotta go find a source of it. We didn't have any at Wally World, according to the wife. Kids don't use that anymore. They got their telephones for all that. But, you know, I remember when you had to have graph paper to do math um, in planning. And that's where it comes in vital here. Now, this is going to be to where this lid will fit over this base. The lid will be a maximum of this length right here. All right? It gives me about a half an inch work with to close it up. But then this is part of the bottom, this line. See the line I'm going to? All right. I want to cut in here, coming down a little bit, but I want to part it off here. Uh, you got to play with me, okay? We're going to do that. Shields up. That's just to press lightly. Why? It's out of the way. And it's where I'm going to work to later on. What did I do? I gauged it by what I looked at on this end. Remember, I'm not drawing it out. It's in here. And that's a dangerous place. Shields up.
Now I get guys that'll ask me, guys and gals, would I take my saw and finish this off? No. Right now I got a super clean, smooth surface here, and a fairly smooth, clean super surface, super surface over there. Super surface. I can say that three times. No, I'm going to part it completely off using the parting tool. This is from D Way Tools. See the name on it? D Way Tools. It's made here in the USA, and it's really good. It's a simple sharpening trick to, to point up that thing. All I do is take my diamond stone and stroke up, to put the burr back on it. That's what does the cutting. That's out of the way, and that's what I was looking for. Now, back looking at the back windows, these are the front windows sometimes, but I forgot to reference the grain. This line here and this line here, if I put them back together, I'm going to great reference to the grain. I want to want that later if I had a change in the grain that was radical and I had a color shift. Well, I have one right here. Here's a color shift from this down on. I have another color shift on the other side. There it is. It get right back online again. So if you want to, are you really interested in making it look like that's just a barely line and not a big seam? You want to reference the, 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 the joint. So that's what I have here. You'll understand it more later because I don't understand it all right now. I want to start this by hollowing the center of it a little bit. I get it really got it really get rid of some meat. Get out my way. I've done a little hollowing to it and I put this depression in it. This depression roughly runs into about about here. Which gives me about a quarter to three eighths to do a lid. If I want to take it to the ornamental machine later and put a rose or something on top of it, I'll need that quarter to three eighths of an inch. Now, I used the basswood for a couple of reasons. It's soft, it's pliable, it cuts good threads, it's pretty, and I can emboss it later on the ornamental machine, which I'm still working on getting back into. But right now, I need to put in the threads in the lid. Now, the first step is this. Now, this is just cuts a little mortise. You see how it's, oop, where is it? There it is. See that little burr, where, come on camera, get in there. All right, you see how that little burr is? That's my relief. Now, if I had a little more time and a little less effort, I would go ahead and reduce the length of this a little bit by sharpening that edge, sharpening this edge and bringing it down a little bit, because I really don't need that much. But I don't want to mess this tool up from what it came out of the factory box as. So I'm going to put that little relief in there using it like a scraper. Shields up. Shadow's throwing you off. Maybe I can get a little closer for it. Whoop. Right, it's cleaned up a little bit. The fingers. I, I love work with this wood. Wish I had more of this bass wood. You see where I put that little recess at right there? This is parallel to this other face. And I checked that with my micrometer just because I got two good flat level servers and they're, they're parallel. And opened it up. I put it in there. Where are we doing that? Opened it up, put it in there, and then took a hard look at it to see if this was parallel. Because right now I'm touching both points on the bottom, so I shouldn't see any gaps up here. Now I need that to be pretty much straight away. Well, I need it to be straight away, not pretty much, but I need it to be straight away. And then that gives me the points I need to start with. You'll understand we start raking in, raking in 
these threads as to why I have that relief done. Okay, you might need to move again. Now I'm going to put my shield back on again and move stuff around. You're on a different camera now. This is a Robert Sorby 10, PP, 10 TPI, that's threads per inch, and look, they do match, they do fit together right. Now, why did I have it? Because I had this in three sizes, and it's so easy to pick up a 10, a 12, or a 16 and get the wrong one to do with parts. Okay, this is the internal, and I'm going to bring my delay speed down to about 200 RPMs. Not much more. I don't need more than that. And this is going, I want, uh, let's show you this. I want the threads to go just like that. Which means I want to go from the inside over here to the outside. That's going to be the pattern for the threads. Got it? Got it. Let's blow it out and get it out of the way. I do love working with this wood. Got some? Let me know. Okay. Let's crank this thing up and get going. Shields up. And I say that because I don't want you to think we're doing this without the right safety equipment. I'm wearing my safety glasses. I got my shield. I got my smock. There's no jewelry on these hands. Look at that. I'm still waiting for the right lady to put a ring there. But I want the finger instead of the ring. So I'm going to crank it up. It's moving a little bit quick. I'm going to slow it down a little bit. Can't go too slow big motor in this thing so that's about where I want to go how because I want to be able to control what happens here what's going to happen here I'm taking this tool which is cut on oh, get it out there see that is those pieces are on an angle you can make your own out of a file well you better be damn good uh, but you can do these these threads and you sharpen it by just lapping the top off to keep that burr going, to keep that dead edge very sharp. Now I'm going to go in here, go ahead, I'm too low. I'm too low. I'm rubbing the bottom of the bevel. So I'm going to raise it a little bit. Oh, don't do this when the lathe is running. I'm stupid. All right, I'm going to raise it a little bit. You see how. Couple of things. Number one, if this is not clean, burr free, if this is not if this is not clean and burr free, it will one will read the other and you will get a mess up. Now, uh, move you a little bit. Why didn't that work? Hold on. I've been staring at the monitor for a few minutes. The monitor's up there to see if I could get the camera in a position where you can see what we've done. As you can see, I'm getting some grooves in here that are becoming threads. And the process is, I am putting the tool in, I'm getting a bite, and I'm pushing it back to take those 10 TPI back into it. That's where that break I put in there comes in at. That break gives me a spot to get out so I don't get drawn to the back and tear it out. If I didn't have that brake, I'd have to stop and get out. I'd have to stop anyway and get out, but if I have the brake, then I'm getting out without destroying the thread. That's critical. Let's get back to it a little bit. Now, as we're pedaling along at a fairly smooth clip here, I have put a little bit of wax, just a little Renaissance wax on the top of my tool rest here to make it non-slip. I put a little bit on the back of the tool to make it non-slip. Not way over, but then I need it to move because this, see the little pattern right there? All right, when I make contact with the wood, it's going to be the same pattern. Now, 
we'll shut her down. Show you this is where we are now. You can see. Can you? I'm almost at zero right there. Watch it grow. Grows into 10 TPI. Look at it going all the way around and down. Then I'm getting down to the void spot that when I ground out where I use this little cutter and I put that little spot. I would like it to be a little bit shallower than that. This will work. Now these tools are all by Robert Sorby and they're available and watch the the thick the uh, the the tool thing. You don't want to start with a 16 TPI or a 20 TPI. You want to start with a 10 or if you can get it an 8. Um, why? Because you give yourself a little bit of uh, flex here. Okay. Now I got to blow it out, clean it up a little bit. Right. I can look at this and see that's pretty good. And this is fairly smooth. And this edge right here, although you can't see it, I'm slightly recessed on this edge. Where I have more meat out here than in here. Easier to fit when I get to later on. Now I can clean this up and take the little button out the bottom. See the little button? I hate that when I find out the start turnings. I'm going to clean it up, take that little button out the bottom without damaging my threads, which are looking really good right now. And if they didn't get dense enough, I'd put some thread densifier on it. Thread densifier. All right. Um, I think I've got a bottle of it over here on the table. You're going to love this. Um, I get this only for this purpose. And it's really cool stuff. This is thread densifier. Oh no, it's not. It's Starbond Super Fast Thin EMO2 Instant Adhesive. Oh yeah, because if these threads are looking like they might not stabilize or might have a little bit of warp, warp to them or whatever, I can just take a little bit. Let's do it. I'm gonna take a little bit of this EMO2. Just Go in and put a little bit on there. Now you notice I'm not coating it like I would regular threads. And I am moving away through the whole thing. And I'm not going to leave any holidays. Go back and clean it all up. There you go. Now you see what I did? I just coated those with super glue. Which means they're a little bit stronger and a little bit denser than the plain boxwood. I want that. Now they're all playing with the same toys at the same time. I cleaned up this lid, this lid inside and I'm going to sand it a little bitty bit with a one inch pad. All right. But there's my grooves, my threads. They're in there. They're 10 PP, TPI. They're pretty uniform and consistent. They're okay for what I'm doing now because I'm playing with this to get back into the groove of it. This is recessed and I cleaned it up with a little scotch Bright type pad right here. That's all I put on it wipe it all out and get all the, the fuzz and all that off the top of it. I don't want to overdo it. I don't want to sand these because I want to flatten them out I'll lose the use of them. And it's real critical when you fit them together. Let's go to the other end. Hey board turners, I'm Captain Eddie Castle and bear with me with the heater. This is the day after I started the one about the threads and the temperature dropped a good 25-30 degrees overnight. We got some kind of arctic temporal blast, significant ratification of cumulus clouds. Cold front came in, and I mean it came in. It actually used snow in a word when it was describing a weather last night. Snow, S-N-E-A-U-X, snow. That's the cool ass version of prep fly. We don't get that here, but I came back out to the shop today because after doing the first half of that video, I wasn't really happy with what I ended up with. And guess what? It got a lot smaller because I'm still playing with this. So I'll tell you what I'm doing. I like it. I can make this thing work into a little jar, a little can, and the more I've looked at it, the more I have liked it. But it needs some finishing. And I'm going to probably do a separate video on how to do that. 
but the next video is going to show you how to do the bottom half or this half of the thready piece. We did this one, right? You see it? Threads and all that. Now we're going to do this one. So bear with me. Stick around. You know I don't like to make these things drag out too much. I really don't. And I want to be honest with you. This is not what I came out to turn, but it's turned, and it will look nice when I get done with it. All you got to do is watch. But, I mean, watch the next one. Not, not. When you finish watching this one, watch the next one. And there'll probably be one after that, too.